when people go through a time of pandemic or when people go through a time of transition where they lose important people in their life and they decide who they want to choose for their life, they have to face the truth that there are people in this world that are monsters about their rights, but they're monsters about their own rights, but they do not protect other people's rights. The problem today is that people have forgot what human rights are to a point. They have forgotten what the treaties of old stand for in the world. They also have forgotten that we went out there to do those treaties because of the abuse of people, the abuse of children, the abuse of ladies. And when those charters no longer say those words, you have to wonder who's been monitoring their websites. The documents and the originals are probably somewhere in the Library of Congress or something like that where an astute person can go and look them over and make sure that we have the right information at our fingertips. You see, in order to have our fingertips left alone by the people who are abusers, we have to know who they are, not at all. We have to recognize that they are out there, that in our communities there are people who do not belong here. And how you say that politely is really hard because we like a lot of people, we like variety, we like diversity, we like foreign food, we like a lot of things in life. But we have to recognize that the American continent, the American culture, American freedom, American attitudes are what the rest of the world usually likes. It's also what they envy in their worlds and they come here to take advantage if they can while they're here. I helped someone come to study here and I openly did that quite well. It became a quality relationship and I don't have to give much more to tell. But when I'm talking about the realities of our laws, there are certain laws that govern the international agreements we have with the rest of the world. Sometimes they're different between different nations and our nation and our government. They're not the same straight across the board as they should be. But what we really have to look at is whether or not we deserve to have the future of our children governed by people who are not really American citizens, American bred, American born, or back to the, to the heritage of the Mayflower. You see, if you don't have an understanding of our civil wars, if you don't have an understanding of how the red, white, and blue flag came into being, then you may not have an agreement or an, an understanding of why it's sort of an abomination to the Lord to burn the thing. But yet, we allow that in American culture because of freedom reigns. The problem with freedom reigning too greatly is that people think that America is free. In the last year, I have had literally a thousand plus dollars of personal property that I pulled as a picker and a recycler and a refurbisher from me by Mexicans in a company that thought they had rights to pull from me. The problem is they might own a property, but the city ordinances protect all people, all diversity, all levels of lifestyle, all levels of income, all levels of people in American culture. The challenge I have with these people is they don't even speak a lick of English. So how the motherfuck did they get here, I can't tell. When I brought people into America to study, they had to have a certain level of TOEFL and TOEIC to tell. And those are particular types of international English exams that say that the person can survive here, thrive here, and do okay on exams. When we have people that walk across the border or come through the, the channels on boats and other ways, we are literally being in, impeded in our life and in the ways that our children need to learn about real life. Our children, some of them, are too arrogant and too proud to serve food to people. And when I think about that, I think about the rudeness to the Lord. How do we thrive in life? How do we survive in life is totally based on the ability to eat, the ability to need food, and the ability to have food in American culture. You see, farms and fisheries and vegetable gardens and industries that handle with our cattle and our steer and all those other things, they belong to Americans, hopefully. Because if they don't, we are put at risk. Because it is our grows, our growers and our farmers and our solicitors of meat that help to make sure that we can eat. And I apologize that I'm not as clever today, but I'm a little tired today. And when I get monkeyed with by the technologies that come in from foreign lands and that are used by military to try to keep people at hand, we have to recognize that our government knows a lot more about the international world than the local populace does. And that can be sort of something to be worth being heard. But when I'm talking about life, I'm talking about the right to freedom, 
the right to life. And right to life is just not a concept of whether or not we keep a baby or don't keep a baby based on our financial wherewithal to provide adequate psycho-emotional, intellectual, and fiscal support to a child. What we're talking about is a person's human right by their birth in American as a, as a nation to be allowed their birth certificate and allowed their rights to their personhood, their paperwork, and their property.